In um, the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invincible summer. That quote by Albert Camus reminds us that in the midst of these dark days, there is always something to look forward to. And Beth Ann Langrel, who's the CEO for For All Seasons in Easton, um, is here to speak with us today about mental health in winter time. And I will let Beth Ann, I've written some things down, but I don't want to take any more time. So I will let Beth Ann tell you a little bit about For All Seasons. I will just tell you that she has guided their growth in the past few years, expanded their services by, by quite a bit, recently been named to the Maryland Commission on Women, and is also a singer and act. So Beth Ann, thank you for being here and take it away. Thank you all for having me. It's really good to see some faces. Hi, Robin and Carol Edwards, because I haven't said hi to you. Haven't seen you all in a while. Um, I, as Anne said, my name is Beth Ann Langrell. I actually, um, for those of you that are not familiar with my story, I actually arrived in Maryland in 2005 to be the director of student development at Washington College. And so my home for the first a um, couple years that I lived in Maryland was in Chestertown, and I still consider Chestertown to be a large part of my home here in Maryland. Um, and I relocated from the college to take over the executive director role at Four All Seasons in 2013 and have been um, residing in Easton with my boys and um, loving the work that I do in our community. And Anne, as Anne said, I am the CEO of For All Seasons, and we are your community's behavioral health rape crisis center and mental health agency. We have offices in all five counties of the Midshore, and we have experienced over the last seven years um, quite a bit of growth. When I first came to the agency in 2013, there was 28 staff members, and we had a budget of just over a million dollars. And we have since then blossomed into a staff of 90 and we now have a $7.5 million budget. And so our, our services have expanded. We have expanded from five offices across the five counties to now seven offices. We have two locations in Easton and we expanded to an office in Tillman Island. We have an office right in Chestertown, um, right across from Domino's Pizza on Washington Avenue. And that office has been there for just over 15 years. And so we are really excited to be a part of your community. And we provide behavioral health, um, both mental health and psychiatry services and rape crisis services to the Spanish and English speaking communities across the five counties of the Midshore, regardless of one's ability to pay. We take all insurances, we serve our uninsured and our underinsured. And I would say that probably, um, you know, it, it's been a long journey over these last seven years, really talking with our staff and the community about the needs that are prevalent. And so we have pivoted and we have either cut programs or grown programs based upon the community need. And probably for us this past year in the pandemic has been the most altering 12 months of the year. We've gone from serving just over 2000 clients um, for a pretty steady amount over the last seven years that I've been there to now serving almost um, 3,200 clients. Since March 1st, we have brought in over 1,100 clients that had never walked through our doors before. And the number of folks that are reaching out for services has skyrocketed in all five of our counties that we're serving. And I think what we know the most about what has transpired over these last 10 months is that no one experienced what we're experiencing now in, in our lifetime prior to. And I've said a lot of times as I'm doing talks in the community that even those of us who rewinding to St. Patrick's Day of 2020 could say that we had a, a pretty stable mental health status. We're all experiencing something different than we anticipated experiencing. And even those who did not need mental health services in the past have started to reach out to just say, I'm feeling something different. I have a higher level of stress. And our agency has really tried to step up to the plate to be able to provide those services. We've moved in a direction of really trying to get the word out to folks that it's okay not to be okay, that it is okay to reach out for services, whether it be a billboard on Route 50 that was placed all through the month of September, October, November to reach people as they were starting to travel again or presentations that I've been doing in the community or our staff has been doing. We're really trying to get the word out to folks that 
the stigma that used to be associated with reaching out for mental health services is now a time of the past and no different than when you have a heart disease, you seek services of a cardiologist. If you are someone who is dependent on insulin, you're going to your doctor to take care of your diabetes. Our hope is that folks recognize that the largest organ in your body is your brain. And that just as we need to take care of our heart, we also need to take care of our mind. And we've had a lot of conversations across the last nine months about the need for reaching out within the community, making sure that your circle is taken care of, especially as, as we know that folks are starting to feel a different level of isolation. We know that our children are experiencing something different than they've never felt before. Um, as a single mom with two kids under the age of 12, I can tell you that I experience on a daily basis the firsthand challenges of my kids virtually schooling in the dining room and in the toy room while I'm in the kitchen three days a week. And then the kids are traveling to the office with me the other two days, really trying to make sure that they're taken care of, the office is taken care of. And I am not unlike a lot of other parents who are juggling the stress of raising children in a virtual world while also having to pivot at the workplace. And we know that grandparents are missing their grandchildren and their families. We know that there's a, a big interruption in terms of our ability as humans to connect. I, I love what you said, Anne, about, you know, even if it's just two of you on the Zoom meeting when you're connecting, sometimes that ability to know that you've got that space and time carved out in the schedule can make all the difference to someone who is feeling isolated or having a difficult day. And so I'm so glad to hear that that's what you're doing. I was just talking with um, the faculty and staff at Chesapeake College today, putting together some workshops that I'm gonna be delivering to their team and talking about the, the importance of intentional connection. You know, as a human, as a human culture, we are used to hugging, we are used to connecting, we are used to being able to not only have conversations with people, but also be able to read the body language of people. And when you take away the ability to connect in circles um, and be able to see folks on a regular basis just in passing, it takes a little bit different planning to be able to reach out to people. And I continue to say in either the television spots that I've been doing or on the radio, that it's really important right now through these winter months to take the moment to pause and think about what you need, but also take some time to reach out to people, sending a simple text or sending an email to someone to just say, I'm thinking of you. And, um, and checking in with folks a little bit differently than we have before. I think it's, you know, we're all guilty, myself included, of saying, hey, how you doing? And being so busy that we move on to the next thing before we've really taken an opportunity to stop and check in with folks. But that's that becomes a really important of taking care of our community, but also about the self-care that you can provide to yourself to know that at the end of the day, you've been able to check in on the people that you care about. I think we're in a time right now where the majority of us are in what I call COVID fatigue. It's something that just continues to go on and on. You know, when, when we first started in COVID, it was, okay, we can, we can get through the, the end of the spring, and then it was the summer. And now we're in a stage where we know that we have to hold on. And as vaccines are coming and there's unrest within our country and people are experiencing stress differently, the numbers are rising. I know for me personally, I have experienced a, a great deal of loss because of COVID over these last 10 days. And I was just having a conversation with my staff this morning saying, I, I, this bubble that we have all been protected in has become a little bit unhinged. And so recognizing that we are all experiencing something different I just wrote a message today um, through our newsletter that went out to the community and, and one of my parts of my director's message out to the community is that there's that age, age old statement of we're all in this together. And I think um, the importance of taking a moment to recognize that we are all going through something but we're not necessarily in it together because we're all experiencing something different or holding space for something different for people. And so through these winter months, as you think about the time that you need and what space your family is going to need and how to get through that loss and isolation is a really important opportunity and you all have created what i call a pod by meeting and having the opportunity to come together and those pods become super important 
because you have that natural check-in. And so making sure that those meetings are continuing, if you're not seeing somebody on a regular basis that used to show up, checking in on them. You know, we get through the holiday time when there's families in need that there's a huge surge of support and help, but maybe thinking a little bit differently about the things that you are grateful for at the end of the day, you know, whether it's you spend five minutes in the morning saying how grateful you are for the things you had yesterday, or you think about the things that you're going to do in your daily routine, you know, tomorrow morning thinking about here's what I can do today to make a difference. And it doesn't have to be really large things. One of the things that we have really focused in on with our communities is that the simple things make a difference. And so um, if you're someone who isn't able to provide donations to nonprofits during this time, but you can send a note to the staff of an agency and just say, the community is here supporting you. Sometimes small little things like a thank you note or a phone call to um, a, a business community saying, is there anything we can do to help? Can make all the difference in the world and it also helps then to fill back our hearts and be able to come together in a, a space where you know that you've been able to reach somebody differently than you might have a year ago. I think the other thing that we um, that we look at, especially as these winter months come in, you know, this is a time where it's a little bit difficult to get out in the community and it might be harder to get out and do walking or there may be for, you know, people might be saying to you, I have, I have kids at home, I can't go out in virtual school. We've got to be a little bit more creative. Um, I just had a, a conversation with a mom this morning and she said, I'm so used to running, you know, for a mile in the morning. And now that my kids are home virtually, I can't do that. And I said, well, fine, you can't go running down the road, but you could walk around your house for 10 minutes you know, you just survey your property for an hour um, or take your kids with you. And so helping people think a little bit more creatively about the things that they're doing and, and how it's working. Our mental wellness isn't just about our, our taking care of the mental health. It's also about our physical health. We just entered into a partnership with the YMCA in Easton. And part of what we will be doing is providing a staff member two hours a week for virtual meetings for all, all the YMCA meet members to be able to say, here's, here's what's going on, help me understand what services you can provide. It's not counseling and it's not um, a consultation time that is anything that would lead down the road of counseling in that moment, but it's the ability for the YMCA's executive director, Derek White and I really recognizing that part of wellness and the wellness of that healthy mind and body really comes in not only recognizing that it's important to go and sit and talk if you need to talk, but also that you need exercise or on the other hand, vice versa. And so we really are making an effort right now as an agency to hit those places where we know parents need extra support. We know that people are still struggling with their finances. We know that folks are struggling to find employment. And so being a connector in that community has become extremely important. The other thing that we really have focused in on a lot is our children and our young people and knowing that there's a lot of unrest within our children. Um, speaking as a mom who has kids that have the benefit or the sad, unfortunate situation to have their mother be a counselor, my kids have to talk about COVID all the time and talk about the effects and I'm constantly checking in on my kids and and, you know, in the very beginning, my youngest, who's nine, kept saying, like, why can't they just kill the COVID mom? Like, why can't they kill the COVID? And so helping parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and community members figure out how to have these tough and vulnerable conversations with our children and recognizing that their little brains might not be able to process all that's happening and understanding that some of what they are feeling might come out differently. You know, you might have a child in your life who is reacting to things a lot more strongly than they had in the past, or maybe there's a lot more anger that's happening and trying to help families unpack some of that while also recognizing that at times, parents, teachers, aunts, uncles, grandparents, we are, we are not all showing up the way that we always wanted to. Um, you know, I know for myself, it's, it's a lot about giving the permission to not do it right all the time. And that's one of the messages. If there's one thing I can, you know, implore to our community is that giving the permission to make mistakes through this pandemic and make mistakes through the winter months as we're trying to support a community 
who is feeling so much unrest and so much loss and sadness is a really important piece because we don't know the script. There is no script for what we're experiencing. And so some of it becomes what we're experiencing personally, and some of it also becomes what people are sharing with us. And so the ability to say to somebody, it's okay that you didn't get it right the first time. Um, you know, I know for me, it took me three weeks to figure out virtual school. We tried a million different things. My, my colleagues, um, you know, that are at the office, we've provided a really flexible schedule to our team specifically because what you know, what people need today is not necessarily what people are going to need tomorrow. And so um, nimbleness is something that I think is really important as we continue through these winter months where we know that people feel things differently. It's, you know, seasonal affective disorder is something that's very real for people. Couple that on top of loss and isolation is, is devastating for folks. And so the ability to just say, I, I'm checking in on you and knowing that you don't have to have all the answers when you place that phone call or when you're reaching out to someone, that's where we come in. And so I, I say to people all the time, you don't have to know the answer on the other side if someone says to you, I'm not doing well at all, or I'm really struggling and I'm not sure that I wanna live any longer. The number one thing that I can, in, can say to all, everyone in our community and you know to those of us here today, just simply saying thank you for sharing and and i'm going to help you get connected that's as far as you need to be able to think um, it's not a matter of i don't know how to ask that question because i'm afraid of the answer that's where you know for all seasons comes in there's other agencies across the shore and we work really closely with the mobile crisis team should somebody be in an extreme crisis but it is okay to ask those hard questions. And if you're not sure how to do that, you know, the other thing that we can do is walk you through a conversation if you're concerned about a loved one. Plenty of people give our office a call or reach out to me directly and say, you know, hey, Beth Ann, I saw you talking at X, Y, and Z location. I've got a, a nephew or a niece who's really struggling. How can I help? And so, um, you know, I think that the number one thing is to have the conversation started and know that we all are sitting on this Zoom meeting. Every single one of us has either been directly or indirectly affected by mental illness, whether it be a family member or a friend or yourself individually. The difference between what it looked like 25 years ago and what it looks like now is that for a long time, we were all raised in a culture where it just wasn't talked about. It wasn't the secret that you talked about. You knew that something was wrong with Aunt Sally or Uncle Jim, but you didn't discuss it as a family. And we're really encouraging people during this time to have those conversations. Um, it, you know, there's a, there's a direct correlation in my mind, running our rape crisis center. We of course have been a huge part of the hashtag Me Too movement. And on a, on a different level, but very much similar to it, we know that there could be a hashtag Me Too movement on mental illness as well, that everybody has been affected in some way, shape or form. And so just the ability to recognize that what you all are, what you're doing coming together, continuing to keep yourselves busy, um, you know, whether it is a virtual arts class or whether it's something where you can come in and hear about something that an artist is doing. I love, you know, love hearing about what you all are doing to keep people connected and knowing that in a time where our minds can't be as busy as they used to be because of restrictions or because people aren't going out as much, finding new activities and working with your community to find an activity that works either virtually or the other thing that I've said to people, we do become so busy and trying to keep busy that what you may find for yourself is that you need to schedule in the moment to pause and just to be able to say, tonight isn't about anything other than me. And whether it's reading a book or grabbing that glass of wine or deciding that you're gonna take a walk with a family member or getting outside in a different way than you have. You know, if there's one thing through our winter months that we have to pay attention to, it's ourselves. And so figuring out what works for you and figuring out what works for those around you and supporting that. I think, especially as we look at, um, you know, our inauguration tomorrow and what's happening in our community and in our country, giving people grace and understanding and, and coming to conversations without judgment might not be what you would do to do your self care, but as long as it's not harmful to someone else or others, um, really saying good for you. If that's how you're spending your time, that's great. Um, and I think especially as we're still navigating invitations 
to events or to holiday gatherings, giving people the space to say, I'm not comfortable coming and just leaving it at that. Because I think we all sit in a space of feeling like we have to explain why we are not coming when the reality is we might just not be comfortable and that's okay. But giving people the space to say yes or no, and simply just, and I do this with my friends all the time, people will start to explain and I'm like, hey, I get it, it's good, no explanation needed. Um, and so just those, those little things can make all the difference to someone feeling supported during this time. We do, um, just so you all know, have a great program in your schools in Kent County, and we're really proud of the work that we do with the Kent County school system. And um, I'm very grateful to the Kent County United Way for the support that they've given us over the years that, so that we can continue to see more and more children in the community. We are continuing to take new clients. Um, we do have crisis appointments that are available. We started out with um, 14 crisis appointments about a year and a half ago for the community across the midshore. And since COVID has come um, our way, we now have 25 crisis appointments a week. And I will tell you that most of them are filled each week um, because of the state that our community is in. So please do not hesitate ever to reach out to me, um, certainly making sure that if there's something that you need or that a community member needs, um, I'm really grateful to Anne for reaching out and having me be here. And I do want to be sensitive to A, the moment of silence, and also B, to the ability for you all to be able to ask questions or to have me talk about some topic that you were looking for that maybe you haven't seen yet. But I just wanted to um, give you that sort of download of information of what we are doing and how you can be taking care of you before we open up the questions. Beth Ann, thank you so much for, for being here and for talking. I mean, I learned a lot just listening to your sort of overview. And uh, the word that struck out or struck me was nimbleness. Um, and Mariah and I literally earlier today talked about that and the fact that we are trying to plan things, but that we are also needing to make sure that we're being nimble and coming up with new things and how to anticipate what people need. So I'd really like to hear from the people on the call about something creative they're doing that's helping them have a sense of community, whether it's something that we're helping with or not, and something we might be able to help with in the future, because we're still looking for all sorts of those ideas. And then I'd like people to be able to answer questions of you. So like you said, I keep an eye on the, and I'll wait until about 529 for our moment of silence. But if and, you know, one person wants to jump in and ask a question or tell about something they're doing, I'd love that. And then we'll hop right back on that after 530. And honestly, I know sometimes people, you know, enjoy just listening and that's okay, but I also can tend to feel silent. So please don't let me, um, I am going to not call, I, I'm not going to call on you to speak, Barbara, but I want to say something that I know Barbara is a part of, which is that we do have within River Arts, a photography club, a plein air painting group, a life um, drawing group. And those groups have very creatively figured out how to continue to meet. Um, it's a little tougher for the plein air group when the weather is this cold, but I enjoy seeing their emails when they say, okay, everybody put a mask on and we're gonna meet at the foot of High Street and bring your easels and everything else. And Barbara, I'm wondering, how does how is that going? Have you all had a chance in the new year to meet yet? No, not yet, unfortunately. Uh, Holly and I usually uh, get together uh, in the very early part of the year, like now, and then um, we, we come up with a couple different locations and then we send out an email for everybody else to, you know, give us locations. So everybody has a chance to participate and give a place where they want to go. So at least we can get the ball rolling on the first, um, you know, one and two. But, uh, it's been cold. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, we haven't quite got started yet, but I did talk to Holly this week and everything's good. And um, we're going to get together soon because this is, this is, like you said, it's isolation and I don't know where to start. I have started so many projects and I have not finished one. And it is from thing to thing to thing and it's awful. It's awful. I got messes everywhere. I, I can tell you, Barbara, that you are not alone. That is probably the thing we've heard most from artists and people who like to um, express themselves creatively is so many people are feeling like 
I thought I would be, I'd have all this time to do my work and I can't, I can't quite get it going. And nope. I think everyone's so maxed out that, um, you know, I, I hope that nobody's feeling bad or guilty about, you know, not being able to sort of produce their masterpiece during this time because it, it's a lot. And I, yeah. I'm really curious how, what we're going to see sort of as we emerge from this period and people start to be able to relax a little bit and, and what kind of work is going to come out of that. Yeah, it's interesting because plein air painting all last year uh, through the summer and and into the fall, I painted over every single one of them. They were just awful. They were awful. And it's it's in my head now. So I haven't started anything. Barbara, I'd like to come back to that. Um, if you all don't mind, you know, I think we've just hit, according to my computer, 530. And I looked earlier, I was just looking at the inauguration schedule for tomorrow and saw that this is the moment where they're lighting the, um, down by the, with some of the memorials, um, bathing them with light. They said, you know, feel free and you all can do this later in the evening if you want. Light a candle, ring a bell, just close your eyes and take a deep breath. But for all of us to take that moment to remember those we know and those we don't know that have been affected by COVID and it's a pretty solemn time. So I'll be quiet for, you know, 30 seconds or so, and then we can jump back into our discussion. Thank you. Okay, I have no idea how long 30 seconds is. But thank you all for taking that moment to, to think about others and to, to have that moment. I will also throw a quick um, love and light in for those of you who know Paul Santori. I don't think he would mind since he shares all of his thoughts on Facebook that you know, he's in the hospital with COVID right now. And um, we're really thinking of him right now in our community and many others. And so thank you for sharing your love and light with all of those who are hurting. And Barbara, back to your thought about creating and having things be not any good. Um, Mariah, you had jumped in and said you've heard that from a lot of people. And I know people who said, I can't create anything. You know, we're that's just not um, that creative spirit. We think we have all this time, but then nothing is coming of it. <laughs> Anybody else feeling that same way? Um. I'd just like to say something because I'm not going to be able to be on here much longer, but I joined the River Arts Photography Club as not a photographer, an iPhone photographer. And I've been regularly there for since March. And it is helping me to see the beauty in the world differently. All these people with all their equipment are helping me get better. And I, I think it has saved my mental health. I can't tell you, I, I say that I would, I'm would. i saving money for a psychiatrist by being on the photography club. And it's really true. I'm seeing beauty in little things and then sharing that with other people. And they even gave an iPhone class because I was getting better with the iPhone. So they said, oh, we should do an iPhone class. So... It has saved my sanity. So thank you, thank you for that photography club. It's so special. Yeah, and, um, speaking of nimble, I mean, Steve Kane, before we started salons, I mean, I think the first day we ever had to close our doors, Steve Kane was jumping in there with the virtual photography club. They went from meeting once a week, month to meeting once a week. They've done all this stuff. It's really, I really admire that um, willingness to try a new way to um, meet that, that same need and serve those interests. 
Yeah, Carol, thank you for sharing with us. And I know we'll share with Steve as well, because I mean, that I almost got all teary eyed because that really sometimes we wonder, is anybody out there, you know, because we know that people want more of what we used to do and we want to do what we used to do. And we're trying to do what's going to connect people. It makes me feel so happy to know that what Steve started with the photography club has really made a difference like that. So thank you. And Car the other Carol, I saw you raise your hand. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask Beth Ann a question. Um, she mentioned really briefly about what they do in our public schools. And um, <clears throat> I know even before she started with For All Seasons, that was a big thing that went on here in, in Kent County. And I know you had a lot of kids that um, you were taking care of um, and meeting with uh, quite frequently. And I'm wondering how that's working now. You said you have 25 appointments available a week. Do the kids are the kids coming in? Are you still going to the schools? Um, yes. Because I know our the, can't the tell what the kids are doing. Yeah, the appointments are our crisis appointments. So therefore, the entire community across all of our seven offices, our children's services, as well as all of our services, um, we sort of, we did a what I call the bunker style um, COVID switch. And we literally took all of our supervisors the first day that we had any inkling that we were going to be facing any sort of a shutdown. And we spent five full days going from a only in office um, visiting mental health agency and rape crisis center to being fully virtual as well as continuing our in-person appointments. So our kids have not missed a beat in terms of the ability to meet with their therapist. Um, we have worked with people in terms of connectivity issues. They have their virtual appointments or they can still be seen in person. Our office has never closed um, through this time. About 60% of our folks are working a three-two split schedule. So three days in the office and two days at home. Or um, some of our folks who are willing have been working five days a week to be able to still see folks. And so even though schools have closed down, the services are still provided, students are still able to meet with both their therapist and the psychiatrist, and we do a variety of in-person and virtual appointments. Bethann, I was wondering if you had encountered talking with other community groups other creative ways that people have um, used, whether it's art or music or reading or poetry that have given uh, people some new ways to connect during this time? Yeah, I think there's been a number of groups. Um, I know some of the groups that I belong to that, you know, we're all used to performing year round. Um, there, there have definitely been um, some outdoor events that took place in the fall where there would be socially distanced like one singer at a time and the Oxford Community Center certainly um, took an opportunity to get some of that um, singing out that you know we, have, we couldn't sing in groups but we could do it very um, I was unable to be a part of it but I think um, you know the community had came together the Avalon down in Easton has done an outdoor tent and they have very safe socially distant pods and so that's been able to serve as an outlet for folks who are used to seeing live music. There's also been a number of, and we did a, a workshop with, we have something called Color Me Closer and it's a coloring book that is a therapeutic tool. So it's a huge coloring book with essentially two images on the same page and it's for adults and children to do together um, or adults, you know, friends that are struggling my aunt and uncle live in Florida and um, at the beginning of the pandemic, their neighbor um, committed suicide and left behind two young girls at the age of 13, they were twins. And I sent my aunt and uncle some of these um, coloring books so that she would have a modality and a way to talk to the girls without sitting down and saying, tell me how you're feeling, but really just a way to, to structure. And so we've seen lots of our, you know, our art therapists are using a lot of art over um, the services that we're providing. And we're finding that people are coming in and we have doodle sheets all over our office now, some of the adult coloring pages. People are really using that as a way to sort of calm anxiety and calm stress and make sure, I think our needlepoint groups, um, some of the folks that have come into the agency, needlepoint has started up and they might not all be able to sit in the same room, but they can have, you know, their glass of wine and their needlepoint and they all just sit and connect. And so really where, um, and I, I can appreciate sort of the comments of it's hard to sort of get restarted again, because I think that we can 
sort of get stuck in that rut. And so one of the things I would say is just choose one thing. And I know that we all have started a million different projects, myself included, um, but just giving yourself a tiny goal that you can accomplish on a Tuesday rather than tackling an entire project. But, you know, maybe it's just as simple as I'm going to spend 10 minutes painting and I'm not going to do any more than that. But then that way there's that checkbox that, okay, today I was able to meet that goal and maybe the next day it's 15 minutes, but trying to work way, your way back into a flow of what used to be. Um, and one of the other things that a friend of mine is a wonderful artist, his name is Kevin Garber. Um, he has started to paint flat rocks and he, is a, he does birds, that's what he paints. And so that's a new project that he has started. And it's been a really awesome inspiration on social media for us to see the rocks that he's been painting. Um, and so those, the, those are some of the things that we've heard about. I have, I, that's exactly what I did. Since I've been stuck inside, I started painting weird things. Um, <laughs> just hang on a second. I have one right here. <laughs> really weird things. So if you can see this, this is, and I've done like 10 of them. This is uh, Napoleon Bonaparte crossing the Alps. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. And that is my dog. That's my dog, Joe. Well, that is what I've been doing, trying to make myself laugh. So I've done uh, Girl with a Pearl Earring, and I've done all sorts of different things. Just maybe 15. It's mm -hmm. stupid, but that's what I'm stuck on. That's the only thing I've done, and that's what I'm stuck on. I think it's awesome. And I love the fact that you just said, because it makes you laugh, because I think that's the other thing that we need to be able to infuse in is laughter and humor and you know, what an awesome thing for five years down the road, Barbara, for you to say, and here is my COVID painting. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'm serious. laughs> I'm gonna whole series. <laughs> exactly. I'm kind of tempted. I'm like, Barbara, I want to see the whole series. We can put together a little slideshow and share that with people like Barbara's COVID paintings. We are, we'd be happy to do that because it's fun. And I love that. Yeah. It makes you laugh and it brings a smile to your face. And that's the funny thing is it will bring a smile to somebody else's face when that was not necessarily your intention, but like other people are going to get joy out of that too. Yeah, that's really it, cool. It was pretty funny. I can send you the pictures. I got a whole bunch. <laughs> Email you. I would love to see them. And I think, you know, one of the things that I've been thinking about lately is um, expectations, both of like productivity, like how much is anybody able to get done in a day or able to, you know, what can you take on? And also of um, sort of, I don't want to say quality, but I mean like what you expect yourself to be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like it's okay to just throw that out the window and to assume <clears throat> in terms of productivity, like I just assume nobody can do anything in the same amount of time that they would have been able to do it before because everybody is just you know there's the logistics are complicated the the everybody's exhausted it just feels like everything is a little bit harder and so i have been trying both with myself and with other people to kind of build that in like okay maybe i think i can do that by tuesday but i'm gonna say friday <laughs> <laughs> And I think the classes that we have um, gotten the maybe the best response to have been the very simple ones. Like that's really more like just doing a project together, you know, a, something simple. You're not trying to learn something new. You're not trying to, you know, master some new tool or technique, but you're just sort of together with people, even if you're not in the same room, um, doing something expressive. Robin, did you have a hand up? I, you're on mute. Day at a time. That's all I was saying. That's all I said. Yep. That is exactly right, though. One day at a time. And there are times these days that it's like one hour at a time. Things change so fast. <laughs> exactly. I was going to um, point out, I was sitting here at my desk, which always seems to be a mess. And while Ben was talking, I something caught my attention out of the corner of my eye. I ordered these postcards a week or two ago. 
and they are, I got them from an artist that I saw on Instagram and they're all the same. And I just thought, you know what? One of the things I'd like to do this year is reach out. And even if it's just a postcard, which doesn't cost that much, send an actual piece of mail to a friend or a loved one or just somebody that I care about. And as Bethany was talking, I thought, oh yeah, now those have been sitting on my desk for what's today, the 19th, and I haven't done that yet. So I took the polygraph off them and this will inspire me to get moving on just that connection. Now, Bethany, you mentioned intentional connection. And I think sometimes we have to remind ourselves, you know, even from the pre-COVID times that reaching out to somebody and just letting them know we're thinking of them Sometimes a text is good, but other times there's other ways like picking up the actual phone or right. mailing something can be a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think especially, you know, we, we get so much mail around the holidays and especially as we talk about our winter months, it's so nice to receive a piece of mail that's not a bill or, you know, your taxes or something. You know, it's just nice. And a postcard is a really simple, quick way just to drop a note to someone. Yeah, and Mary uh -huh. down there, both of you, I saw you unmute. Yeah, hi, Anne. Um, I just wanted to jump on what Carol had said about the photography club. You know, I've been in that thing since the beginning of March. And uh, something really cool came out at last Thursday. Bob uh, Miller gave a little presentation before the regular meeting about he had all kinds of pictures of trees and like, what do you see in the tree? And so uh, we took as a uh, challenge this week or Thursday night to come up with at least one picture of something you see in that tree. So it's been a lot of fun. We've been out there, you know, get a little more fresh air and walk around and look at trees and take pictures. And anyway, and, and you know, Ann, I was in your, in the um, watercolor class too. And <laughs> I've been going to contact you. If you think about it, I can you send me the links to those two videos that she sent? Because I, I lost them somehow. Thank I will you. definitely do that. That was, that was one of the things I did. I, I stepped out and took a watercolor class, which I've never done in my whole life, and, oh. and had a little fun with that. But I'm kind of back into acrylics more and, of course, photography. And hi, Beth Ann. Uh, you know Mary, I think. From, I do. Uh, it's good to see you guys. Yeah, you know her from uh, NAMI. 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 Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate hearing from you all. I will send you the watercolor videos. And I love hearing about somebody trying something new. And, um, and I think that's really cool about going outside and finding something in trees. Like sometimes just an excuse to get outside and, and look for something or do something a little different. So we're going to look for more ways to engage communities with those kind of things, like Beth Ann mentioned, whether it's needle point or just a, a chance to get together and, and create together, even if you're all just working on your own little project. So thank you all so much. I know we're already a little bit after 545. So unless anybody has another question, I will um, let Beth Ann, if you have any other things to share, and then Mariah will, I usually close us out with a toast. No, just thank you so much for having me on. It's been great to be with all of you. And please reach out if there's anything that we can do for you or those in your circle. Thank you thank so much. You. Yeah, thank you for being here, Beth Ann. Sure thing. I, I, um, I was going to jump in about the mail because we've been, Ann and I have been kicking around, you know, various ideas about a mail project that, um, you know, it seems like such a perfect thing to do um, in our river arts community, but um, we have just been like so maxed out with trying to do all this, keep everything going that we're doing that we haven't really had the bandwidth to do that. So if there's anybody here, or if you know anybody who's got an idea to kind of um, lead that kind of a project, please let us know. And, and we are here to kind of help make that work out. Jerry, are you volunteering? Well, not. A, I don't know. I, I'm just going to share one paragraph that's exactly to what you're saying. I last week I found an essay and I that I wanted to send to a friend, but I couldn't send it online, so I sent it snail mail and wrote a little note. Here's what I got back, and I'll just read the a paragraph of it. Dear Jerry, I love the essay you sent. I read it. I read it immediately upon opening. 
Plus, it was such a rare treat to receive real mail, not catalogs, free offers, etc., that I decided to give you a piece of real mail instead of email as a thank you. And then <laughs> just today, I sent her a thank you for the thank you. <laughs> that was great. Well, That's so nice. thank you for sharing. I, I would love for us to be able to um, do something like that. And but it, you know, we haven't we haven't taken it on because we don't want to start something that we can't actually follow through on. But um, if somebody's interested in talking about that, please let us know. And I think um, as we close out here, um, you know, we've got the inauguration tomorrow. It's a new year. We have this. You know, there's a, there is a light at the end of the tunnel here with the vaccine. We don't know how long the tunnel is or how kind of bumpy it's gonna be between now and, and when we get there, but it's there. So I think what I would like to toast to is, you know, new beginnings and, and the hope that comes with new beginnings, even when they're only in the future and you're not quite there yet. So here's to that and, and, and a nice thought for Paul and Inez, who I know are really going through a tough time right now and we're hoping for a quick and easy recovery for him. And, um, and to all of you, and, and thank you. Stay in touch, and I hope that you'll come back next week. Thank you so much. Thank you all.